This video is brought to you by Viz Academy Professional Rendering School. Visit our website to learn more about our 3ds Max course. Link in description. Hello. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about Corona Scatter. So, Corona Scatter is a very useful tool, which is part of Corona Renderer itself, and we're going to use this to our advantage because we want to show you how to create lawn and, of course, how to scatter out your objects into your scene and. Let's just go through it by creating our Corona scatter. So let's go to creation panel, pick Corona, and let's create this Corona scatter. So we're going to create a very basic shape to make sure that we are able to distribute our object on it. And to make sure that we're actually working with something more interesting than just circle, we're just going to create a star and a circle. So yeah, it's not that exciting, but still it's going to be a little bit more than just one shape. So first of all, we're going to add the distribute on objects. Always remember to right click to disable this plus after you're done with adding your objects. So you want to avoid adding extra objects this way because well, you may end up with clogging your scene. Of course, the second thing is to add instanced objects. In this case, those are going to be the small trees. And as you can see by adding all of them at once, we actually created something called scatter. It's pretty much as easy as it looks like. And this is what we can use to scatter out trees inside of our woods or bush or whatever background that we like. But this time we're going to explore one of the options that I found to be very, very useful for exterior shots and sometimes for interior as well. And that is 1D splines. We're going to try to scatter out our objects on this spline to create shapes. So this is going to be very useful when working with your 3ds Max for 3D uh, visualizations uh, that will take place outside. So mostly exterior shots. And of course, let's just go through it and talk a little bit about the basic options in Corona Scatter. First of all, we've got this scattering options. So by clicking on enable and disable, you're pretty much able to turn on and off this element. Uh, you can here pick one of the three options that Corona Scatter has. So one is 1D on splines, 2D that you've already seen, and 3D in bounding box. The third one is rarely used, so let's not talk about it. Max limit and randomization seed are very useful for our work. And we're going to go through it in another video, but you know, they are going to be very, very useful. Avoid collisions, always going to be our, uh, a fan of that, but we're not going to use it now because we want to, our small plants to actually collide a little bit. Okay, so with all that out of the way, we can jump into transformations. So transformations are the most easiest part to understand. So we've got a movement. Its name's translation seems more reasonable as its static values. From 2 will position your objects in a given range on axis that you picked. And if you want to move them up, just add a little bit to Z value. And as you can see, they are now jumping. So it's going to take random turns. And if you want to make sure that this, this uh, objects are going to, let's say, jump by 10 centimeters, this is how you can do it by pretty much adding the step distance. Rotation is one of the most useful elements of it. And I'm pretty much always using this 360 option to make sure that my objects are going to look more randomized. And of course, we've got scale. Again, it is the most useful of all the transformations as it will have the most impact on your object's look. Remember that if you combine the three of them, you will achieve the best results. This is one of the key elements of achieving photorealism. But right now, this pretty much looks like some kind of crown. So we need to jump into the spline scattering options. And here we've got the spacing, jitter and offset. So first of all, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, space between the objects. So let's go for 50 centimeters. And now this looks more like something I would actually uh, like to add to my 3D visuals. But 
still we need to add a little bit more so let's make this 80 centimeters and as you can see now it works a little bit better but still I'm going to be a uh, cheapo and I don't want to plant as many trees in my backyard so this is pretty much going to be it but uh, as you can see this may look a little bit artificial because the distance between those objects is going to be fixed and we don't want that so let's now add one more more spline to our distribute on objects to make sure that we're going to see what I'm talking about and as you can see again this doesn't look good because uh, it's a little bit artificial so let's just jump into it and try to actually change one of the elements which is going to be jitter of course by adding let's say 25% it's not going to be still visible so we're going to go all the way and let's just add a something around 70% now it's a little bit too much so some of them are actually touching each other and yeah it's not exactly what I meant so usual save value is going to be somewhere around 35 or 45 because it's going to make it look a little bit more random and as i said the randomness in your object is going to be very 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 important because as soon as your viewer will pick up some patterns it's going to scream artificial and this is pretty much how you can conduct yourself when working with 1D splines uh, one thing that I also want to uh, show you is that if you add value from 2 to 15 it's not going to be ideal why because in this case we're only adding the positive value of 15 even though we've got this um, 360 rotation in Z so let's just disable that and now you will see that all of our objects are actually leaning one way so to make up for it you need to add the positive and negative values I don't know why this works this way but I'm pretty sure that it was to allow you a little bit more control so again we will add a little bit of this rotation from negative 15 to positive 15 which is going to be a lot and too much in this case because as you can see it actually looks like a, after a storm so maybe let's go for 3 and again 3 minus 3 and 3 so again we need to re-add this 360 uh, you can actually add this 360 to zero it doesn't matter we only need this to have this strong uh, change so as you can see they now look really really nice because uh, they no longer look artificial uh, we've got a lot of variety just coming from a few objects so even if I take away three of those objects so let's just um, delete them from the stock now you can see that we are using only one object as our instant object and well it pretty much looks pretty random it doesn't look like it has a pattern and it doesn't look the same that's due to the fact that we've got a lot of variety in it we've got this rotation and even looking from far away you still cannot tell that it's actually repeating itself this concludes this video leave a like subscribe and visit our website to learn more about Viz Academy online courses